So, you think you've seen every little detail in the newest FNAF movie trailer? Well, this video might just prove you wrong. Hey ya folks, and as I'm sure you're all aware, we just recently got our first fully fledged trailer for the FNAF movie. Giving us our best look ever at what this extremely long awaited movie is gonna entail. But of course, as FNAF tradition goes, this trailer isn't complete without a plethora of subtle secrets. With this new FNAF movie trailer being no exception, so without further ado, let's dive into the top 10 secret details you may have missed in the new FNAF movie trailer. So starting off at number 10 with the more obvious details and then making our way down from there, we've got the missing cupcake shot. One of the quick shots we get in the trailer is security camera footage of Bonnie and Chica standing in front of a vent looking pissed off as ever. But if you look closely at this shot, you'll notice that Carl the Cupcake is not on his plate as intended. Ever since the days of Help Wanted, we've seen the Cupcake take on an antagonist mind of its own. And the FNAF movie is clearly gonna follow this trope by allowing Carl the Cupcake to have some fun of his own. Heck, another shot in the trailer shows the Cupcake looking pissed off as ever and ready to chew gum and kick ass. Plus, someone working on the movie also hinted at a scene where Carl the Cupcake bites somebody. Yeah, you're gonna wanna take this fella seriously. Logically speaking, the Cupcake wandered off into that ventilation shaft, but he could be right behind you. Up next at number 9 is this big yellow bear sitting in the back of a samurai's taxi. Sure thing you can't miss his big head consuming half the shot, but what I do want to talk about is the fact that this is Golden Freddy, not Freddy Fazbear. Now to some people, including myself, that's self-explanatory, but a surprising amount of people are actually under the assumption that this is Freddy Fazbear, mm -hmm. not Golden Freddy. If you look closely, you can clearly distinguish the difference in color between Golden Freddy here and regular Freddy, Plus, this guy's got a withered ear paying homage to withered Golden Freddy. Oh, and Golden Freddy's also got a blue eye, portraying good, unlike Freddy with red eyes, whose intention is to turn Abby into one of them. And I don't think a part of that would be chilling in the back of a taxi with her. Up next at number 8, we've got William Afton's false name. So if you look closely at old Willie's desk here, yeah, you could see Steve Raglan. Hey, <laughs> yeah, Steve Raglan, my arse. Of course, he's got to fake his identity because William Afton has not got a good reputation in the slightest. And by having this fake identity, William Afton will be able to successfully fill Mike into accepting this deadly graveyard shift. <laughs> Up at number seven are a bunch of official merch cameos featured on the deteriorated shelves of the price corner. If you take a closer look at the contents of these shelves, you'll be able to make out the Gen 2 Sanchi Freddy and Chica plushies, as well as the masks of those horrendous Ruby's costumes. And they've done a very good job at getting these items dirty. Damn, I'm really glad that that's not the original Chica Sanchi plushie from 2016, because as you may be aware, they're very valuable today. For number 6, we've got a cameo from yours truly, the Enragement Child Balloon Boy. Hello. In this interesting shot, we see Abby staring into an endless void of children's drawings. These are mostly just children's drawings of the animatronics, but there's some interesting ones, such as the foreshadowing of the infamous murders with Spring Bonnie here with five children, and of course, the appearance of Balloon Boy. And of course, he's heading the infamous, yet irritating voice line. <laughs> but hey, massive spoiler alert. This ain't the only time you're gonna see Balloon Boy in this movie. <laughs> Up next at number 5, we've got another cameo from an official piece of merchandise. That being the Funko Bonnie plushie. In this shot of a storage room, we can see, of course, the usual junk, but what will stick out to ya is none other than Funko's awesome Bonnie plushie. But hey, not much else to say about this, just another fun little detail that's a little bit harder to catch than the obvious Sanchi plushies chilling on the price corner shelf. Up at number 4, we've got YouTuber cameos. 
Of course, you've got the really obvious Corey X Kenshin appearance who plays the taxi driver, but did you notice the other YouTuber cameos? In this shot, we can see an Employees of the Month board, where we can see three very well-known YouTubers in the FNAF community, those being Doco, 8 Ryan, and Fusion Z Gamer. And thanks to an image posted by Doco himself, we can see this board much more clearly. Now we could have expected cameo appearances from both Doc and 8 Ryan, because not only have they had strong connections with Scott Coffin himself for years, but they were also provided the opportunity to visit the FNAF movie set. Fusion Z Gamer on the other hand was a much more unexpected yet welcome surprise, especially since he very rarely shows his face. Up at number 3, we've got a reference to Midnight Motorist. I bet you weren't expecting that. In this shot of the squad ready to break in and kick Robo ass in the pizzeria, we see Carl wearing a Midnight Motorist t-shirt. You know, that one minigame from FNAF 6 that totally screwed with the lore. Just gotta keep that flame burning for old MatPat, eh? But hey, it's still incredible to see how faithful this movie is being to the games. For number 2, we've got, yet again, another merch appearance. Don't worry, number 1 isn't gonna be another one, this is it. Now this one is a really hidden tiny detail, so much so that I can't even confirm it is the right item, but I'm pretty sure it is. In this shot, if you look really closely, you can make out what I believe is the Hacks Toy Chica plushie. Now this would make sense because not only is it just her head, Keep in mind that the Hex plushies are magnetic and their heads can be removed, but also because Hex is owned by Doco. Keeping in mind that Doco himself has a cameo in the movie. Now last but not least at number one is something I'm sure most people didn't notice. That being the updated FNAF 1 Celebrate poster. There's only one minor change to the poster in the movie. That being that Bonnie's rocking a brand new guitar. This design change began in 2019 with the mobile remaster update for FNAF 2, where Toy Bonnie's guitar was entirely removed. This was due to the fact that Bonnie's guitar design was actually copyrighted, and not Scott's work. So you'll notice that ever since, Bonnie's guitar has been totally remodeled in all media, that includes merchandise, the games, and now the movie. And that does it for the top 10 hidden secret details you might have missed in the FNAF movie trailer. So let me know in the comments below what have you learned today, and what ones did you already know? And with that, I'm tuning out, and I'll see you next time.